right, so we are back on the F30. We've been picking away at a couple little things. Actually, we swapped out our intercooler for this plasma man. Uh, upon initial inspection, it just looks for one way cooler. And for two, um, we actually weighed it and against the other intercooler that we had in here, and we were saving six pounds just in our intercooler. And it also allows us to run these 90s off of the end of it instead of having to run a weird angle coming off the end tanks there. So Cricket's gonna work on the intercooler piping today. We just got our trans and bell housing put in and we're gonna put the um, winters in there. So we are at a bit of a debate here and we are trying to come up with a good name for this car. So if you guys can help us out in the comments and help us name this beautiful, beautiful thing to have something unique, something kind of German, something kind of Japanese, I don't know. Mix yeah. between. Mix I don't between. know, we're stuck. We can't come up with something, so we're leaving it up to you guys. Give us a name, a good one for her. We're usually good for him, her, him, either way. Yeah. We, got, we, have a, we, have a, we have Tyrone, that's a guy. We yeah. have Mona. Yeah. So, it could be whatever. Japanese or German. Yeah. I mean, Blue Thunder's just Blue Thunder, so I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily be like a name name, but just something to call it so we can, you know, give you a better guide on this build series. That we know what car to load in the trailer when Dark is like, hey, load up the BMW. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Which one? The Jay Z one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. The green one. Oh. Yeah. So we need a name. Give us a name and let us know what you think about this Plasma Man intercooler. It is sweet. It's beautiful. Yeah. And I did some brake lines yesterday too. These little guys. Yeah. We did bulkhead all of these into the car so that I can run them around the back side of the firewall so we don't get all the heat from the downpipe soaking into that brake line, which we did have an issue with one time on the orange car, so we are just avoiding that issue altogether. And we're actually gonna hide them in the back of the wheel wells because this thing has such big wheel wells. Shout out to Chase Bass for yeah. that sweet little booster right there. I think it's sick. Love to see it. Sick. I, I got to meet Chase at the 4th of July event. Great guy. Great guy. Ball guy. I was like, what is your, what's the, the name stand for? He's like, well, my name's Chase and I like engine bass. Yeah. Chase Bass. Makes sense. Yeah. Great guy, great handshake. Great handshake. Great Ball handshake. guy, too. <laughs> yeah, really. Definitely tall. dunk. Big basketball player, I bet. Probably. He's like 6'5". At He's least. like this tall. I don't know how he fits in this car. So now that the winners is actually in the car, we get an idea of our drive shaft line. So we took our measurements for our drive shaft and put our order with drive shaft pros and they're gonna send us over a nice setup there. I believe we are going aluminum on this one to save some weight, but it'll probably be a larger diameter because it's gonna be you know, north of our normal like 600 horsepower range. I think we're gonna be around 900 with this one uh, with the Borg Warner on it. Now we're back down here, you can see some of the stuff. Obviously we stole some parts from this car to get Mona ready for comp because we were waiting for a while for the body panels and everything to continue to get sorted out. So we just decided to make Mona the car for comp, which wasn't obviously our initial plan. So now water pump goes back in here. I got our fuel filter kind of mounted. I'm gonna run two bulkheads here for the fuel to go up to the cell. So it'll all be underneath our cover. So nothing's running through the passenger compartment. You know, everything gotta be following the rules. You can see a bottom of our fuel cell here. So where this brake line here is passed through from where I ran them behind the dashboard, it's gonna run up here and split out to go to our foot brake. And then I have to find a good spot to drill through here. That's not gonna interfere with our drive shaft that I can run the um, hydro lines for. Then we gotta get our calipers and rotors and all that stuff. But we did weigh the car in its current state with you know transmission, bell housing, diff, engine, pretty much everything minus the clutch, the radiator, passenger seat, and brakes. So. You guys guess what you think this car weighed as it sits right now. We were way off. Yeah, we I'm were not gonna say off. more or less, but we were way we off. We were off. So what I'm doing currently, I finished up the intercooler piping on the cold side. Come down. Oh, you can see it from right here. Yeah. So that's all connected. So intercooler piping is done, mounted, hard mounted. We added some more pegs up top that bolt the light bracket and the hood pin support to the intercooler, so now it's in there really nice and tight. Uh, I'm also working on my oil catch can from TFF. 
True Focus Fabs. T F F. Yeah. You remember Duarte's his first catch can way back in the day? Uh, Why did it have the drift HQ cover on it? It had the drift on HQ cover on it, so it looks better. Yeah. This, the TFF ones are about it. They come with a drain right here, so you just unscrew this, open it up a nipple in there, and you can drain out your catch can. It also shows you your fill levels. And they come with your two 10 a.m. Johnny's already welded on. Beautiful. Has the foam in there, too, so it, you know, filters it out. It'll just let out smoke. It won't start popping and spitting oil. So, and then they give you weld on tabs. They give you, I think, four of them. And you just put it where you want to, wherever it fits in your engine bay properly. Mine's going right there. And it holds it up nice and level. We're going to do two 90s off of this. And then we're going to route these over and then go into the breathers. The breathers. So it'll be really nice. I'm very happy with it. Got one more tab to do. You only need two tabs. You don't need the four that they give you. But they give you a couple extra in case you mess up. So I always have extras, which is cool because we use them for other stuff too. Like for instance, the tabs on the bottom of the intercooler are from True Focus Fab. They were the other two that I'm not using for this. I put on the bottom of that. So use the tabs elsewhere. They're nice tabs. Yeah, they're really nice tabs. Yeah, there are. I also recycled the um, original line here that mounted um, our wheel speed sensor a little rubber grommet there and so where I bulkheaded up here through the firewalks I didn't want to run the line behind the downpipe soak it and subject it to a bunch of heat so we ran it down here and we are also using dry brakes on our <coughs> system here on this one so which is really cool because we can disconnect if something ever happens one day I'll figure out how to use these things right push in. push oh yeah there you go yeah and that way um, god forbid you mess up a corner or something we can replace the control arm or rips the brake line out we already have a bled brake system. So trying to utilize those here. They're also really convenient if you're doing um, for your clutch line. So if you ever have to pull your bell housing or your clutch or transmission, you don't have to re-bleed it every time you take it out, which is awesome. I hate bleeding clutches because the pedal is never in the exact same spot. Then we have to adjust our pedal stop and a bunch of other stuff that nobody likes dealing with. Every day. Brake fluid will find a way. Brake yep. fluid will find a way. It's horrible. Not today. We're not bleeding brakes today. Not up in here. No, not up we had such good success with the IRP pull-up hydro in Amona. We are actually going to follow suit with this one. We obviously have to get the driver's seat and the shifter position back in to get him really dialed in where we want the position. But what we also like to do, which I don't think we talked about in the last video, it's kind of an unnatural motion to try and pull this handbrake straight up when you're drifting. So we tilt it a little bit towards you like that. So when you pull it, it's like kind of following your range of motion. So there are companies that make uh, bolt-on applications for these style hydros, the IRPs, and I think the ASDs. That'll bolt right into like E36s and E46s. This one, we're gonna have to kind of figure out ourselves. So that's why we gotta get Duarte in the car, figure out where we're going, and also we gotta put our steering column back in, which is important. You need those. Just finished pass. Donnie made it by hand. No, it was just a finish pass on the middle. That's all yeah, I had. That's that's all. Finish pass. Yeah, that's a finish pass. Quick finish pass. I even did the engraving. Donnie's got the best hands in the game, yeah, buddy. Do you remember? Oh, he did it for Tyrone. Tyrone, yeah. I was, yeah. I was gonna show the B1 of this, but. What are you doing? Duarte <laughs> is doing his <laughs> organization <laughs> like always. Bobby's making space. Yeah, you made one for Tyrone. Why is this one so much nicer? What does it come from? So this is a new Drift HQ product. I will show you. So regardless of your motor, whether it be JZ, LS, RB, whatever. Sensors aren't always nice to get to. If you ever have to change sensors because you're running more boost or a sensor fails or something, having them remote mounted is really beneficial. For one, your harness, you can test leads, you can check your power in, power out, and everything like that, as well as voltage going in and out of the sensors. Whereas, normally your sensor would be mounted like down here, like on your oil filter housing or your filter relocation where you really can't get your hands on it. So this lets you remote mount your sensors somewhere in the engine bay where it's nice and beautiful. And it lets you have access to all the sensors, access to your harness and all that stuff without having to worry about it. So for this, we're running, um, this one will go to our uh, fuel pressure regulator to regulate fuel pressure, our oil pressure. You can run manifold air pressure, crankcase pressure. You can run um, back pressure sensor. You can run pretty much anything you want to run. All remotely made by Drift HQ.
move everything away from there, and then we can squeegee it down that way. That's gonna be great. It drinks that way. Oh no. Okay. Yep, that's bad. Yep, three bucks off. Crash and suck, that's the price you pay. Crash! Crash! Red don't know how to swim. Mimi, watch out! But well, we did a really good job of sealing the rest of the shop all the way around. The doors, not so much. Oh, the roof. The roof, the roof, the roof that, that was that. never on our to-do list. That's true. It needs to be on somebody's, though. Yeah. Typical Florida thing. Go for these. Go for do the reverse rain dance. Yeah, worse. You have angered the gods. <laughs> Oh, it did get worse. Oh God! Oh God! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, is it my fault because I'm making water lines? Yeah, it's your fault. Hi guys, so I have my nephew Connor here at Drift HQ. He came down for the week. He's in welding class right now in high school. He's gonna go do a paid internship uh, next year for his senior year. So I wanted to bring him in and teach him a little bit more than what they're teaching him in school. Most of what they're doing is just having him do straight plates like this. And he just started TIGging. So this is his second week. Yeah. He did start it last week or uh, before well, school I've, I've ended. I've been able to do it for a couple weeks, but I just think okay. it would stick more. So he started with this and he's never done any verticals or anything like that. So we gave him some pointers and got him dialed in on the machine. You can tell where he started working and then his way up on stuff. So it gets better and better as he goes around. So he's really starting to get into it and he's doing pretty good so far. I'm gonna teach him how to use the plasma cutter real quick. So that way he can make his own shapes and he can weld his own things. But I'm just giving a couple tips and tricks for him to learn like how to turn down the heat, feather your pedal, get the puddle to the right size that you want. That way you have consistency. So his latest one. That's probably his, my best one. It's definitely your best one and it's consistent. It's a consistent puddle. It just kind of weaves yeah, up and down. Yeah, that's where I st like stop, stop and start at a lot of points. Yeah. So you'll see where he's trying to get consistent with his cup and it's getting a lot one. better. This one was one of his start ones. This was one of his first ones that yeah, he did. That was probably so this is one. without any instruction and then with a little bit of instruction. Yeah. So it just comes down to seat time really and having extra metal. So I have a big scrap bin right there. So I'm teaching him how to cut up with the plasma cutter and just make little plates and just get the seat time, get the machine dialed in for him. And then the more you do it, the easier it gets. So we'll see at the end of the day how good it is. So a little trick for you if you're gonna weld the other side because you get a lot of burn through of the, um, the corrosion and um, yeah. You'll see a lot of the stuff, the impurities in the metal burn through on the back side of it. So if you look right here, Joel, you'll see all the crust that's on here. That's just all of the, the stuff that's not good in the metal that doesn't bond, so it pushes through to the other side. So if you are gonna do another pass through it, make sure you clean it up. And you just basically have to get the flag off of there. Make sure it's shined it up in there. All that crap that was, you know, burnt through on the other side is basically off of it now. So it'll be a lot easier for them to get a better feed. So always clean your stuff. TIG welding, you want everything clean. Everything wiped off of it. If there's any type of crap on there, it's going to burn up and it's going to puddle and it's going to leave a little black spot. And that black spot will leak. It'll leak air, it'll leak water, it'll leak fuel. Whatever you have going through the pipe will leak. So you want to make sure that there's no corrosion, no inconsistencies in it. So you'll see it a lot more on aluminum. If you have anything in the aluminum that shouldn't be in there, it'll pop out and that hole will leak water. 
So make sure you clean everything real nice. Don't use your wax when you're doing your initial grinding and getting the aluminum ready for prep to weld because that wax will bubble in and create those black spots. So make sure your metal is clean. MIG welding, not that big a deal. You know, MIG welding, you can have oil on it, whatever, it'll burn through. Uh, but TIG welding, you definitely want all your surfaces clean. And the back side of it too, because it will burn through and create those little pinholes and stuff that you see on the back side. So there's a lot of staring that goes involved in designing a race car or at least an aesthetically pleasing one where everything flows the right way and looks good when you pop the hood you yeah i'm watching you stare at it and cough occasionally i feel like the cough is like breathe a, a lot idea. of argon what do you want from me <laughs> blocks the throat you know yeah so yeah we're doing we're gonna do titanium downpipe full exhaust and we're gonna do wastegate dumps as titanium as well because i already have aluminum in the engine bay and then we're gonna have titanium I don't want to mix stainless steel dump tubes with a titanium exhaust because why you know like you're already doing titanium everything else you might as well do titanium dump tubes it's just going to look real good especially after i color them yeah it's gonna be good it's gonna be real fun we're gonna learn together you know never done titanium dump tubes or downpipes so it's going to be uh, a lot of argon used so you'll hear me coughing a lot more and it's going to be well worth it very excited Everything else is done besides downpipe and wastegate dumps or fabrication wise uh, besides a couple of things. I'm finishing a e-brake or a hydro mount right now. I'm waiting on Duarte to come in and sit in the car just so I can figure out what pitch he wants it set at. So I just have it tacked so I can either bring it up this way to take a little bit of pitch out of it or I can drop it farther down this way and give it more angle in towards him so the idea is where his elbows at he can go from his shifter to his hydro and if it's angled in this way he just has to pull up towards himself instead of like this so it's going to wear you out after a while doing this as opposed to the natural movement of when your arms are at your sides and you lift up your arms it's easier to come in than it is to go straight up especially to get leverage on it you can pull in towards yourself so it has a little bit of pitch just to make it aesthetically pleasing for him because he uses the hydro a lot and it's going to be a lot easier to pull and we have it as low as possible so he doesn't have to you know horse it up like this because that's the last thing you want to do so he's going to have it right here and then a shifter and then a steering wheel so it'll be a nice progression up from you know the shifter to the steering wheel i just need him to tell me what angle he wants to that and we'll be good to go uh what else did we get done we got the steering column mount all set welded in bolted in it's at the right height for him and you still get the adjustment so it still telescopes and goes up and down which is pretty cool so i only had to weld on a couple three quarter inch dom bars to go to the firewall just because the way bmw has their set up there's two points that need to be mounted to on the actual steering column itself if you only mount one it's going to pivot like this up and down at least shoot an inch and a half each way so you have to put that second mount on there so we just did three quarter inch dom all the way to the firewall and then i put a plate across it so it's solid um it still telescopes and does everything it's like having factory mounts except for you know we made our own and both uh, welded it up to the cage kit so it turned out really well what else did I do today on this? Oh, yeah, we did the sweet little bracket right there, the sensor. So me and Chris made this design for Tyrone. We made it out of one of our old shifter knobs. And Duarte loved it so much, he sent the idea to our CNC guy. And our CNC guy came up with something a lot more professional grade and professional looking. Um, for you guys that want them for your car. So all your sensors can go on to this. <coughs> and then you just run, um, basically they're brake lines. You know, the... Um, 3AN hydraulic. 3AN hydraulic lines that we sell at DriftHQ.com. 
and you just run them to where the ports go in the engine so your oil your heat uh, what else you got crankcase pressure <coughs> yeah that's and fuel pressure coolant so system. all and coolant so this will uh, coolant pressure as well sorry so this will give you all the readings you can send to your ecu make it a lot easier and it's really nice and aesthetically pleasing you know we got the drift hq logo on there how you do is weld on your own tabs which is pretty easy find some place nice in the engine bay to mount it if you're not doing like a huge build like we are with everything going along the firewall it's a really sweet spot to mount it up here but if you're doing like an aftermarket fuel rail and stuff and you want your lines to flow really well this is the best spot you just have to find a nice fabricator that'll weld on some pretty tabs for you because you don't want to make it look trashy you want to make it look good because this bracket looks awesome and it's the little things you know no, 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 it was not. That was great. We definitely need a quick release on this thing ASAP. I just want to know which angle. I can go down lower on it, or I can go less of an angle, depending on your pivot. Go down lower, let me see. I shouldn't have no effect with the seat. Go up a little. I want to go Pull it. I want to see, like, I'm just kidding. Chris is the shifter boy since we don't have an actual shifter on there. BRB. <laughs> there you go. Best shifter hold in the world. You gotta make the sounds, Chris. Bonk. That's Gucci. Yes, sir. Alright, perfect. We good? Yeah, we're good. A little bit of that. A little bit of this. If you notice, we have quite a few things, including a Mr. <laughs> good Bar chocolate bar in the middle of our link. ECU, our ECU Master, PMU, USB to can. We're gonna get an EGT to can from Haltech as well. And then a can hub from I don't know who, and then a cam to the Lambda. Or the can, can hub's actually AEM, if we're not mixing enough brands yeah, together. Yeah, AEM, and then the can to Lambda. Is actually Link. It's Link, okay. Yeah. So we're gonna show to you on this build that you can actually integrate all of these together. It doesn't matter. If you have stuff from a previous build that you were going to go one direction and then come to find out, oh, I want to go prospect, I have to run a Link ECU. You don't have to redo all of your other stuff. You can run the ECU, the Link ECU with all of your other wiring as well. And we're going to show you that in this build. So you don't have to get all of it at once. You can get little stuff here and there if you find something that you like. Duarte had these already from a previous build. So we we're going to integrate them because we wanted to prove that we could do it. Reduce, reuse. Recycle. Recycle. And we have all of this available at DriftHQ.com. Yeah. So, if you already have some that you bought from us and you want to switch something up, change ECUs, whatever, you're available to do that and you can get it still. Spreading the brands around. You know? Yeah. So, the Mr. Good Bar here is actually going to be a Drift HQ logo. We're going to do something similar to what we did in Chris's build. If I don't know if you got that in one of his build videos, but we did this really cool Haltech, like, display and yeah. it's beautiful display that we shoved up underneath his floorboard you could literally take it out of my car and put it on a display booth at, at SEMA, SEMA and it would be beautiful but yeah, yeah. so we stuck it underneath his Get floorboard it. and he's still got lights underneath it so it like illuminates and everything we got a cool clear little um what was that that we used the clear stuff. plexiglass it was a plexiglass yeah. or it was the, okay the so it's a sheet of plexiglass over. and you just stuck a sticker over it and then hit it with the sandblaster and peeled the sticker off and it made this cool like etched look to it. Yeah. We're gonna do it on this, it's gonna look really good, but we're gonna do Drift HQ because we can't put one of the sponsors on there because there's multiple too brands. Many. Yeah, you know, I don't have enough sticker room or yeah. we'd run out of leg room for the passenger at that yeah. point. But in the meantime, we do have our Vibrant order in for all the stuff we need for that, from fittings to a lot of titanium stuff that Cricket's gonna be toying with. Yeah. Um, we have our passenger seat that should be here soon. We got most of the stuff we need to start the wiring on the chassis, which is exciting because I'm ready to work that new uh, PMU 24 in there, see how that goes. Uh, brakes are ordered. We did weigh the car. We, we talked car. about that, yeah. Um, Guess the weight. Yeah, we Guess the weight. As we're not going to tell you what it is. Guess the weight. Person that guesses the weight will get a t-shirt. Yes. Yeah. On Cricket's dime. On Cricket's dime. Cricket's paying for the t-shirt. Let's do closest three. Closest Let's three. do closest three gets t-shirts. Yeah, so yeah. Jay-Z, Steel Bell Housing, Dog Box, 
winters, subframe, front and rear wise fab, full cage, fuel cell. The only thing we're missing really is clutch, drive shaft, the body panels that are going to be and carbon fiber. And there's no fluids carbon in Kevlar. It, so. so it's not going to be that much more weight. And we actually have more meat on the bone to cut off. Now, assuming our target weight with the car done is going to be 2750. Duarte is roughly 150 pounds, 2,900 pound minimum for prospects. So, here we are. So we're gonna see how close we can get. Guess it, get it right, get the closest. You don't have to get it on target. The three closest will get a t-shirt. Yeah, what are the new ones? We got new ones. Now, I don't know, let me know. Do you guys want the, the 4th of July t-shirt since they weren't available for sale so you could feel like you were there even though you weren't there? Let us know. Yeah. That's a good idea. I'll let them pick the t-shirt. Do you want the 4th of July shirt to become available? Because I think we have a little left over. So let us know that in the comments too if you want us to sell the 4th of July. Like, subscribe, comment. Yeah. Easy. Finish your cars. I'm trying to finish mine. Yeah, Craig is trying to finish his candy bar. I'm trying to finish bar. this candy bar. Ooh.